Okay, in this uh, demonstration, I'm going to show you how to graph a radical equation. Now, remember what a radical equation is. It is a, an equation that has a single radical in it, or maybe a double radical. The radical could be a square root, like this one. It could be a cube root. Um, for example, if my index here were a 3, remember this little number up here is called an index. And when there isn't one there, it's, you assume that it's a 2. So this particular case, I'm just going to solve what's called a square root. And in this particular case, it's y is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Now what do you do to solve these? I, well, I like to always use an xy table. And let me show you why here in just a second. Let me just draw an xy table. Now, what I'm going to be doing is choosing a number of x's solving the problem and then producing a y and that's going to make a bunch of points a series of points I liked or coordinates I like to actually choose somewhere between four and five points to do my graph but I have to do some work first before I decide which x's I'm going to put into the uh, into my x values right essentially what I'm doing is I'm looking at this particular problem here and I'm seeing that x minus one is under a square root sign now I have to remember that the square root of any number, the absolute value of a, of, a, of a square root, is always going to be a positive number. Okay, so essentially what I am saying is that x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, the x's I choose have to make this a true statement. Let me show you why. Let's say I chose x was 0. I would get 0 minus 1 and then I'd have the square root of negative 1. And there is no answer for the square root of negative 1 in the real number system. Now there's something called the imaginary numbers or complex numbers, but we're not talking about that for this particular example, okay? So what I have to do is restrict all the numbers that are going to produce positive values in my radicand, okay? And the way I do that is I'm, I say that x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and you can do that for every radicand that is a square root or even any kind of an even numbered root. So that's going to give me, let's go ahead and solve this now, x is greater than or equal to positive 1. And this is now my domain. Now if you want to look at it in the opposite way, you can just say this is also, these are restrictions, right? These are what my x's have to be chosen from. All right. These are restrictions. X has to be greater than or equal to 1. And again, remember, just take this, what's under here, set it greater than or equal to 0, and then solve for the answer. Now, since I know now what X's I can choose, let's start choosing. I'm going to choose the lowest one possible, and that would be 1. So if I put 1 up here, I would say 1 minus 1 gives me the square root of 0. So the square root of 0 is 0, so my point is 1, 0. And that produces 1. Zero. And there's my first coordinate or point, okay? Uh, I can choose 2. Let's try 2. So 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, and the square root of 1 is also 1. So let's go ahead and do that. And that produces my second point, and that is 2, 1. Now, I'm not going to choose 3, and only because it's the square root, I'll get 3 minus 1, the square root of 2, and then that's a little bit awkward. I want to choose a number that's maybe works out a little bit even, uh, a little bit better, okay, a little bit easier for me to graph. So I'm going to choose 5, and watch what happens when I choose 5. So 5 minus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I kind of did a little bit of calculation in my head, said what's going to be the next perfect square when I put this up here, and you can do that. Now, so I just don't cheat too much. Let me just go ahead and choose 3 again, and I'll show you what happens. You get 3 minus 1 is 2, and the square root of 2, if you go to your calculators, you'll see is 1.414. I'm just going to say it's about 1.4. All right, so now I've got my four points. 3, 1.4, and that's an approximate, so I'm just going to make that a little squiggle. It's approximate. That means approximately 1.4. And they all uh, pay attention to my domain. In other words, they all satisfy my domain or my restrictions, okay? So now let's go ahead and graph those four points. Let's just see what it looks like. 
Notice I put it all in the first quadrant. I could see that these are all going to be first quadrant problems. So my first number is 1, 0. So there's 1, and then I go up to 0, and it would be right there. And I'm going to actually label that. Because when I have a graph that doesn't have lines, here's my y-axis, by the way, and here's my x-axis. Uh, when I have a graph that doesn't have any lines, I like to uh, go ahead and label the points. So I'm a little bit more accurate. Now I want 2. So 1, let's just say that's about 2. Up 1. That's right there. So there's, we'll call that 2, 1. I've got 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 2. 1, 2. So that's 5, 2. And then finally 3 and about a 1.4. So 1, 2, 3. 1, about a 0.4 is right about there. Okay? And that's 3, approximately 1.4. So let's go ahead and graph those. Now look what happens to my line. Looks like a nice curve, doesn't it? Now notice a couple things. You'll notice that the x's only go so far as to number 1. And that makes sense because remember what my domain was. I'll get no x's in this direction here because my x has to be greater than or equal to 1. I also won't get any x's down here where y is less than 1. Or less than, uh, well, y is rather is a, is a negative number. Now we can talk about that a little bit later, but for right now just assume that these are called principal square roots, and that's what we're looking for. And there's your graph. Okay, so the graph of y is equal to the square root of x minus 1 looks like this, beginning at 1, 0, and then curving off into space. Okay, I hope that was helpful.